Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I will be reacting to Cuphead vs. Shovel Knight. And this actually came out four weeks ago. My bad on my end. But yes, Cuphead vs. Shovel Knight. I did say I'll side with Cuphead because of range and other stuff. But I w but I'm saying with Shovel Head because I feel because one, he's actually much more durable than Cuphead. Plus, even though I with the with the phase locket, he cannot be damaged. Well, it can be. He is invisible for uh, ten to fifteen seconds, I believe. Um, I think, but mainly he's invisible for a short period of time, and he cannot be hurt while he's in the phase locket. Plus, even though I feel like Shovel Knight's arsenal is more effective than Cuphead's Cuphead armor um, P shots. Like P shots, the boomerangs, the one that tracks, the there's like so many I can't remember. The charge shots. There's so like I feel like shovel heads shovel knights I don't think shovel head. Shovel Knight's arsenal is more effective than Cuphead. I feel like the only thing Cuphead really have a legit advantage of is range. But other than that, I don't see anything else. So without further ado guys, let's begin this video right now. Welcome to Show Off Showdown! In this series, the fighters are called Show Offs, and this is the I series swear. for the Show Off Showdown! Now let's read this off for tonight's showdown, shall we? Tonight, we have a battle between two iconic old school sword indie game powerhouses. That's right, Cuphead versus Shovel Knight! Don't let their size fool you, because they're a small package that pack a pretty ton. I put links That's to the analysis said. of both characters in the description below. I'm sorry, I can't now without further ado, it's time for the Show Off to Showdown! Get ready for the next battle. Why is that? Wait. Why is it Mugman? Where did he go? Shit, over. Oh my god. I can't read this. <gasps> Not Mugman! Um... Wait, he's a goat? I'm, I'm so The glitchiness is real. But that's actually a very good shovel knight mod. Skin, not mod. I don't, I don't think mod is skin. Sean said, what are you doing up there? Uh, where's shovel knight? Finally back to TV. Where did we get anchor from? Uh, I think he had some gun, buddy. Maybe. Willy <laughs> What Falcon Pun Oh boy Well, looks like Cuphead dug his own grave. 
Now let's discuss how and why Shovel Knight wins this showdown. First off, let's discuss who is more skilled and experienced. Now to be honest, Shovel Knight takes this by a sizable amount. Both Shovel Knight and Cuphead have faced a wide variety of tricky and powerful foes. Cuphead has even yep. debatably seen a wider variety of opponents throughout his adventures. Debatable. But the problem is that Cuphead hasn't had as much time adventuring as Shovel Knight has. You see, in the opening cutscene of Cuphead, the devil says you have till midnight tomorrow to collect every one of these souls. This means that Cuphead had at most 48 hours worth of experience using his powers. Meanwhile, Shovel Knight has confirmed to have gone on several adventures with his partner Shield Knight. <laughs> Not only that, but Shovel Knight has also been on more solo adventures as well. His entire journey to save Shield Knight is proof of this. Meanwhile, all of Cuphead's confirmed adventures had Mugman by his side. Now you may be thinking, but you can play through Cuphead campaign on single player so Cuphead can do it solo. But the Cuphead single player mode was very likely something added for the sake of gameplay and not only can to the story that should be taken into account. I um. highly doubt Cuphead would have been cool with Mugman ditching him to do everything. Now let's... Sorry about that, guys. I don't... Yeah, yeah. Brothers stuff, you know. Let's go with this now. Now, both characters are extremely fast in their own right. Let's start off with Cuphead. He is capable of reacting to and dodging many attacks in his game, including cannonballs, fireballs, missiles, and explosions, which is extremely fast, making him many times the speed of sound. However, Shovel Knight Wait, has proven- With one thing too, in Cuphead versus Bendy, he only mentioned about the fireballs. Huh? <gasps> Why? Animation rewind. Why? You lied to me. I can never trust him again. Next video later, I trust him. <laughs> He's much faster. Yeah. For example, Shovel Knight is fast enough to dodge meteors, which can travel at speeds of about 160,000 miles per hour when entering the atmosphere. Okay. Not only that, but on several occasions, Shovel Knight has been seen dodging lightning attacks from the likes of the Bass and Phantom Striker. Now you're probably thinking that Shovel Knight is at the same level of speed as Kratos since he was able to keep up with him in battle, but I would like to point out that the version of Kratos and Shovel Knight is not canon to the actual Kratos from God of War, so it's oh. likely that he probably doesn't scale to the canon Kratos. While you may or may not want to scale him to the official Kratos, if you do, Kratos has also dodged lightning before, which Shovel Knight can scale to. Even if you don't want to use the scale or not is irrelevant, because he can still dodge lightning attacks from Bass and Phantom Striker regardless. Now let's discuss strength. I think it's safe to say that Shovel Knight wins this one by default, because Cuphead has absolutely little to no feats of physical strength whatsoever. His entire offensive game is based on projectiles and not his own physicality. Meanwhile, Shovel Knight is able to plow through stone with ease and effortlessly survive deep underwater pressure while wearing a suit of metal armor and still truck on as if nothing's happening. Yeah. Now let's discuss durability. And before we start, I think it's important to bring up Hilda Berg and her mini consolation feats. These are clearly not real stars she creates, nor are they on the caliber of actual stars. If she did create an actual constellation, they would either be 1, be too far away for Cuphead to touch and be damaged by, 2, turn the planet into a fiery wasteland with heat alone or sure. three, collapse under their own mass since they're so small and turn into a black hole. This feat has just too much going against it for it to be believed that Cuphead is actually taking a star level attack. Now let's get on to their legit durability feat, shall we? Legit. And Cuphead is quite impressive. Now he may be able to only take up to three hits in this game, but one, that is a game mechanic, and two, that still means he can take several hits from the toughest bosses in his game before going down. He can yeah. tank being squashed, blown up, stabbed, run over, shot, burned, and much more. He can even take attacks from the devil, who should be a fair minimum building level via sheer size alone. He can even remove his own head, so killing him by decapitation is not really an option. Who does that sound familiar? Unless you a dimensional reality warper like Bill Cypher or the Living Tribunal, who can change Cuphead's physical properties, but good news for Cuphead, Shovel Knight isn't one of those. But bad news for you. Cuphead, Shovel Knight does have the durability to keep up with him. Shovel Knight has also tanked explosions, fire, lightning, lasers, being launched across the map via catapult, all that oh, yeah. stuff, as well as taking attacks from building-sized remnants of fate, and the Enchantress, who could cover 
cover the entire map of the game in a storm. This map includes Damn. several buildings, a castle, and even an entire village. Also, Shovel Knight is capable of taking more than double the amount of hits that Cuphead can from enemies who seem to be relatively the same in terms of power. Sure, their game mechanics and may not be entirely accurate, but it is something that's still worth pointing out. There's also the fact that Shovel Knight wears armor and has a way of healing himself while Cuphead does not. Now let's discuss power. Now both characters are able to take on and damage dragons, building size bosses, break metals, and defeat foes much larger and more physically imposing than themselves. Yeah. But the difference being that Shovel Knight can do a lot more damage to these enemies in far fewer attacks. While on the other hand, Cuphead has to be constantly, rapidly firing and slowly chipping away at his enemy's health. While Cuphead is able to land more shots on his enemies than Shovel Knight does, it still takes a lot of hits to bring down the bosses in his game. Now let's discuss versatility. Now both characters are extremely versatile with many different weapons and abilities they can bring into battle. Yeah. Shovel Knight has a total of 10 relics and 2 ink cores, including the ones for invisibility and restoring health and magic. The coin attraction one is pretty much useless here. Not only that, but he also has 8 different suits of armor, which is quite impressive, but on the other hand, Cuphead has a total of 8 different handgun options, 6 charms, 6 super move sets, 3 ultimate moves, and his plane. This gives Cuphead the advantage in both both versatility and aerial superiority. Oh. Now that we've gone over their main stats, let's get into some other points that can be made, shall we? As we mentioned before, <laughs> Shovel Knight can heal himself via in core renewal, whereas Cuphead will be stuck with any damage taken throughout the rest of the battle. And considering that Shovel Knight can take more punishment, hit harder, and fight at faster speeds, this won't bode well for our favorite star of 2D Dark Souls. Yes, both characters can become invincible, but Shovel Knight will be able to do it more often and for much longer. Cuphead has to rely on charge his super meter for his invincibility, where Shovel Knight can do it any time via phase luggage or Incore Boldness. And I was right. Shovel Knight I was right about the phase luggage. For his phase luggage, the Incore of Renewal will just replenish it, giving him more invincibility time. And one super important thing to note is that Cuphead's bread and butter, as well as the majority of his arsenal, is projectile attacks. And Shovel Knight is capable of deflecting projectiles with his shovel blade. This what? What the fuck? means that not only is most of Cuphead's offensive arsenal completely nullified, but it can actually be turned against him. Now, some of you might be thinking that Cuphead could just be revived, but one, that requires Mugman, which is outside help, and two, yeah. the first death would count as a loss regardless. Also, Cuphead is going to need to keep his distance in this fight at all costs, since he is only good in ranged combat. Meanwhile, Shovel Knight is skilled in combat at just about any distance, huh. meaning that if he gets too close, Cuphead doesn't really have any op- hmm. What? Are you making videos? Yes! I told you this already! I told you! No, you gotta get out. I can never get no privacy in my house! Which is a pain in the butt. But let's get on with this video, which we only got like 3 minutes anyways. No. ...for defending himself in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So overall, with Shovel Knight having an almost complete physical edge and more options of negating any of Cuphead's attacks via invincibility and healing, I True. think it's safe to say that um, Cuphead may as well start digging his blade. own grave. So in the end, it Shovel Knight that's celebrates what his valiant victory with a nice hot cup of tea. The winner of this battle okay, is one. Shovel Knight. Now let's take things up a notch, shall we? My if God. you guys want to see a two-on-two -two prep time rematch between Cuphead and Mugman versus Shovel Knight and Shield Knight, then let me God, in the comments no. below and we'll see what happens in the future oh and by the way i want to give a huge special thanks and shout out to the animator of this battle the mlg avocado he did an incredible job animating tonight's battle and yes, he, did. he also wrote the script for this episode so hmm. if you like what you see then go check out his channel and subscribe hey my thumbnail next time on show off showdown yay Finally, the battle that went so bad. It's finally coming here. Show up, show down. Finally, finally, finally. Because, I mean, either. Decapitation mode. Okay, I forgot about that episode. This is exactly why I can never get no privacy, no privacy whatsoever. Let's get on with it and let's finish it. 
Let's get on with a new video rate. With a new video rate now. But anyways, I'm so happy this episode is coming soon. But now, now I'm not so sure. And besides, this isn't my sword. Okay. Let's dance. I saw a little twitch. Coming soon. Yeah, uh, stay tuned yeah. for the next episode of Showdown. Yeah, and anyways, um, yeah, we're to that. But, um, yes. People have been suggesting, like, um, I asked so many people about this too. Ryuko, Ryuko Matoi versus. Sorry about that, guys. Um, right now I'm just holding. I'm holding my phone right now, but anyways, yes. Mainly, I want a battle to happen. Ryuko Matoi versus Raiden. And I am very happy that someone's doing it. Oh, God. I see nothing. Oh, God knows. But anyways, um, I ask people, like, oh, yeah, who will win between Raiden and Ryuko? Most people say Raiden. Most people say Ryuko. Plus, even though some people suggested other fights for Ryuko Matoi, for example, Shadow vs. Ryoko Matoi. But I feel like... That's... I feel, well, either way, without a super form, I feel like either way... Either way, Shadow would win. But anyways, if you like this video, call... Oh. If you like this video, call... Please, punch the like button. Punch the like button. Phone, computer, tablet, wherever you do... Wherever you watch this video, shoot that like button. Comment down below with that shovel. Listeners, comment down below what do you want me to react to, and I will do it whenever we get a chance. But without further ado, guys, peace out.